Hey guys, welcome to Sled Talk. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I would like to take a second of your time and introduce this season's title sponsor is Bikeman Performance. So they've decided to jump on board and help push the podcast. And if you're unaware, Bikeman is the elite level when it comes to aftermarket performance parts on your sled. So be sure to check out their site, link in the description. And without further ado, let's jump into the show. Let the band play. 100K on the protect, Believe it. living life with no regrets. I can't design her when I get dressed. Hey. Hey. Summertime on winter fresh. fresh. I put her legs behind her head. Oof. Night, night, she gone to bed. Bye bye. Every day it's a new test. Uh. I just keep chasing these checks. Uh. Living life with no regrets. 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 All right, so let's talk, listeners. Welcome back to the next episode. Episode two from the Cooler Freshies Winter Kickoff Party. Uh, we're back for another episode, so let's get into it. Jaden, you want to introduce a special guest? Yeah, man. So this is Darren Teal. Um, I met him last year, two years ago now? Two years ago, yeah. Two years ago. Um, this guy freaking rips on a snow bike. Yeah? Um, I, so, a little backstory. I have never once um, thought that snow bikes were very capable until I met Darren Teal. <laughs> this guy freaking literally rips a, sli- or a snow bike, so... Anyways, that's kind of my introduction for you. Um, go for it. Um, yeah, I guess Darren Teal. I live close to Jaden here. I live over in Post Falls, Idaho. Um, been a snow biker now since 2009 and just enjoying it more and more all the time. So it's been awesome to get out with Jaden and, and learn some what sleds can do also and, sure. and try to pick up on what they do and and learn from that. It's been, it's been literally, fun. literally every time we go out, it's like we're feeding off each other. Sure, like sure. I've never seen a guy do bow ties on a on a snow bike, and then <laughs> yep. he he just whips them out all the time. Yeah. Heck yeah! So uh, obvious question, but why why a snow bike and not a sled? I guess I switched early on. I had a two moto at first, and then switched to timber sled as soon as that came out. Um, and it was really just a desire from when I was young to ride my dirt bike year round okay ride it in the snow um just kind of never quit and also i was into snowmobiles pretty big and back in that time my last sled was a 2006 m7 and that, the, that's why he quit riding them <laughs> pretty much <laughs> don't blame you <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the durability just was not there for what i wanted to do with it got it um it just got to be frustrating broken parts all the time bent chassis it just it just wasn't up to what I wanted it to do. Sure. Gotcha. So that kind of pushed me into the snow bike world. And, um, yeah, the opportunities and the, the growth is like a rider. And, and now I'm a dealer for a snow bike company. So okay. It's, it's just kind of been, it's been a really fun experience. I'm stoked to hear about that, actually. I'm yeah, stoked go. to be looking at one right, right. now. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. yeah. The camera. I think yeah so, <laughs> ready. so go into that a little bit about being a dealer and, and walk us through that. And then we'll, we'll jam on that pretty little thing over there. Okay. Um, So, yeah, I'll give you a little more backstory. I was a timber sled ambassador for quite a few years, and then this last spring I got the opportunity to check out this new kit built by Alan Magnum, the creator of timber sled. Mm -hmm. Um, This is his new product, and got to test ride it, spent a day on it, Um, was kind of considering, you know, switching over, being a rider for, for Mountaintop is what it's called, and after a day of riding, we had dinner together, and, and he asked if I'd be interested in being a dealer also. So hmm. kind of overwhelming a little bit at sure, first. Sure, and, I could imagine. And so <laughs> went home and told the wife, and she's like, well, why wouldn't you? So Yeah, that's, uh, that's a good wife there, buddy. <laughs> supportive. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we, I thought about it for a couple more months, and finally I said, yeah, I think, I think we can make it happen. So. Nice. Here we are. We're about a month and a half into officially being a dealer. Okay. Um, are you just day in, day out building those kits? No. Oh. I've, I've only built my own right now. Um, Based on the, on the Instagram story, I thought that you were guys were just like, you know, you were handed the parts and just had to build them. For my kit, I have a prototype kit here. It, was, it came in pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, then a couple hours on the phone with Alan, he explained how to put it together. Um, Local, local, right? You guys are local? 
I'm here the, in Post I mean, Falls. you are, but yeah. he, Alan, is local as well, yes? or Alan and the Mountaintop Company is based out of Idaho Falls. Oh, no. okay. So not yeah. too far, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's about seven hours. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> could be Midwest, but. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what's what's the biggest difference between, it's Mountaintop? Yeah. Isn't it? And Timberslide, what's the biggest? Weight? Is it weight? There's a huge uh, weight difference, right? There's about a 20-pound weight difference between oh. this kit yeah. here and a, and a timber sled riot. Okay. Um, yep. Timber sled drops some weight with their new arrow line. Yep. Um, but the biggest difference is suspension design. This has a linkage driven rear skid suspension and also the third shock, which kind of helps attach the kit to the bike mm -hmm. is also on a linkage or in a timber sled. It's more just a straight up and down. And so this gives you a lot more progressive ride. Okay. And the, the suspension on this mountaintop kit is also slid forward. So if we go over and look at it later, like both of the rear shocks in the skid are tucked up underneath the rear fender. I noticed that when I was looking at them on Instagram. Yeah. So what, I mean, that's just, you know, putting the center of gravity closer to the right. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. How is it as far as playfulness? It's pretty incredible. Like yeah. You mentioned doing bow ties, and that's, as soon as I got to doing that stuff on this kit, like, when it comes up and comes out of the air, mm -hmm. things happen really fast. Like okay, that's cool. It rotates. Better very be prepared. Quickly. Yeah, <laughs> got it. It took me off guard the first few times. Sure. But, so, beyond that, it's a 12 inch wide track compared to 11 and a half inch wide, um, and they put a lot of effort into making it skinny. Like mm -hmm. This whole sure. thing is is very skinny. You don't have that huge, you know, chain on the right side or well, our right yeah. side. Yeah. It's there. It's just tucked in. Yeah. Gotcha. And so what kind of bike is that? What all do you have set up on it? That is a 22 and a half, they call it, factory edition KTM 450. Um, right now, it's fairly stock still. I don't have parts for it yet. It's a mm -hmm. brand new model, so parts sure. are hard to get. Sure. Um, I have an SXS snow shed that he calls it, which basically just helps keep heat in the motor. Okay. Yep. And coming in the future will be foot pegs and, you know, heated handlebars, tunnel bag, and all that stuff. Gotcha. Just not ready yet. Sure. Hmm. As far as the heated handlebars, do you have to route your um, coolant up to them or? Yeah. So we'll <clears throat> cut the coolant line, leaving the head of the bike, put mm -hmm. a thermostat in so it has the bypass that goes up through the handlebars and then back down into the motor. Right. Rather than through the radiator. So gotcha. what a task, huh? It ain't, it's not bad. <laughs> yeah. It's a little nerve wracking to cut the hoses the yeah. first time. But. Yeah. Heck yeah. Scott, you got yeah. some questions off the quiet over there. <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> they're definitely different. I've ridden just snow bikes in general a handful of times and I have a lot of respect for what you guys can do on them. <laughs> it's yeah. uh, not easy. I didn't grow up riding dirt bikes at all either. So the whole clutch thing is uh, a little awkward sure. for me. When I'm I, used to used to just riding snowmobiles. So, um, but they're cool. It's amazing what you guys can do on them. It's like I said, I have a lot of respect for you. So, yeah. um, and it's cool to see more competition out there and uh, with the mountaintop kit and yeah. So when I hopped on a on a snow bike, I've only ridden one one time, and it was like the most awkward thing because I grew up on dirt bikes, and I really wanted that front brake, and I just didn't have it, which is weird because a snowmobile doesn't have it, but right. it felt awkward not having that on a bike. I just felt sure. awkward all around. It was, there was nothing <laughs> yeah. natural about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I've never really, I've never spent any time around dirt bikes. I have a cousin that that raced motocross, and so he's got a snow bike. He got. Um, I think it's the Riot 3 Pro, I believe. Yeah. He snow checked that last year. He's got a Honda 450. Um, and I helped work on it a little bit and putting it together. And then he got those, the heated handlebars with the coolant that go through the radiator and dealing with all that stuff. It was, it was pretty interesting. They're super sick. I've always been super fascinated by them. Um, but I've never, never hopped on, on one. Oh, really? I don't know if I'm kind of scared to, honestly. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot going on, but, yeah. but that's just, that's just me. But, so cool so yeah outside of uh being a dealer like what what do you do for for work i'm actually a landscape architect okay. so i draw plans for like uh schools yep parks water parks a lot of commercial stuff 
commercial and public works. Okay. Like street frontages and, you know, all these roundabouts that they're putting in everywhere. Yep. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So what does is, what is your schedule look like during the winter? Then you get a lot of time off to be able to go ride or? No, actually, because most of our design work happens during the winter so that it can be bid and then built during the summertime. Gotcha. So I still work 40 hours a week year round yep. and play on the weekends. Gotcha. Heck yeah. What is your ideal? Would you rather go ride with a, a group of sleds or, or <laughs> a couple of snow bikers? Well, you guys are different. Yeah. To me, most okay. sleds go to an area and they just hammer it until it's just beat down. There's nothing left. Um, and a lot of times that's kind of boring. Absolutely. There's some features and stuff. Like you guys like to find features to, to jib off of and, yeah. and hit some jumps and, Speaking I enjoy of features, that. I found a cool one for you this year. Uh, oh, for, for me? You. Yeah. Oh, nice. I want to see you jump that thing. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Hold yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to twist his arm. <laughs> I want to I wanna see that, like, going 100, 150 feet. I was showing. Uh, I don't, can you get enough speed on those geez. things or what? Maybe with some uh, nitrous. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't really. I honestly don't know anything about them. I mean, yeah. I've I seen would, you guys ride them, but not like that, I guess. I was showing Scott your new page, that Moto 365. Um, and he was, he was like awestruck about some of the jumps that some of the guys were doing on the bikes, like straight to flat. It seemed like almost too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, uh, you can't get the speed like you guys do, but I want to actually build some jumps. Usually we're just searching for natural terrain stuff Mm -hmm. and that's hard. Especially here. Yeah. There's (laughs) nothing here. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you ever need help shoveling. Yeah, you got you a got couple snow guys that'll come help. There's two scoop shovels right there, yep. and they both always ride on my sled because someone doesn't like the scraps or wrap. <laughs> well, you know, I gotta keep it nice. I gotta keep it nice. Uh, and know? he wonders why mine's all beat up. <laughs> well, that part I know why. But there's a lot more that's beat up on that sled. Anyway, it's all good. Um, I am curious about Moto 365. Yeah, um, I was just gonna ask it's that too. Very similar to Core Freshies, I think. Um, is it so that you could structure your timber sled business under that or? Well, there's a lot of history to that actually. Um, my buddy and I were a dealer for timber sled back in 2014 to up until timber sled was bought out by players <clears throat> and Moto 365 was actually a name that he came up with basically Moto 365. Sure. Um, and so when timber sled bought out, or player spot out timber sled we kind of had to shut that down they wouldn't allow us to sell stuff out of our garage anymore mm-hmm. and so we gave that dealership away and things went kind of sideways with the dealer we gave it to and so then i just became a timber sled ambassador and, and didn't really got out of sales altogether gotcha until this popped up and i just thought it was fitting to reuse the name people yeah. already kind of know it a little bit and I liked it. It was a fun period of my life selling kits the first time around. So mm-hmm. sweet. Thought we'd try again. Heck yeah. Absolutely. Love it. Hey, what's up, guys? Hope you're enjoying the show so far. Just want to take a quick second to introduce another one of this year's sponsors. We got RSI. So whether you need handlebars or grips, seat covers, controls, etc., doesn't matter. Use uh, Sledson2023 at checkout for 15% off your next order. Uh, did you come to the kickoff party last year also? Yeah, I was here for a couple hours. Yeah, yep. it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like okay. they they really stepped it up this year. We, we paid them to say that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> per contract. <laughs> no. Heck yeah. Well, this yeah, this one should be pretty fun. I'm looking forward to it. This is my first time. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. so it should be a good good time. Um, or right, did you guys pitch in some some giveaway stuff for? I the brought raffles? yeah, I brought a couple hats and some stickers, but. Mm-hmm. At this yeah. point, that's really all I got. I was going to say, you literally started this company, what, a couple months ago? Yeah. Like, <laughs> months I'm impressed you brought anything. Yeah. <laughs> Heck, yeah. No, that's awesome. So what's so let's talk a little bit about Moto365. Like, what's the what's the big vision over the next couple of years for you? What do you see? Uh, I have ideas, but mainly I'm just going to wing it sure. and see where it goes. Sure. Um, yeah. I have a lot of ideas, but... I, I'm going to run out of time. Like, I can't do it all. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I'm just going to do what I can these first couple of years and see what happens and then evolve from there. Ideally, I would like to be able to, um, say, a customer walks up and say, hey, I want a snow bike, a 
I don't have anything. You know, what bike would you recommend? What kit would you recommend? And what parts and accessories? And I just put down a list. I can go pick up the bike. I can order the kit and be able to sell all the parts and accessories that he needs and mm-hmm. build it up and have a complete ready to ride snow bike for him. Sure. You're you're gonna install all the parts and everything for him as well? Yeah. Do you have a shop to do that in? Yep. Cool. Um that shop that's always on your Instagram, is that you yours, I assume? Yeah, that's at my cool. house. Cool. Yeah. And that's where this is all kind of based out. That's of. convenient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Heck yeah. Uh, something that I just thought of, uh, why KTM? I feel like I haven't seen very many KTM snow bikes, but maybe I'm just not in it enough to, to uh, see them. But, so why KTM versus Honda or Yamaha or anything else? I would say KTM is probably the most popular snow bike. Really? A mile, yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, <laughs> you just showed my colors there again. <laughs> All of us, really. I know, I know. I, yeah. I just, yeah. So if you look at any of the the major manufacturers, almost all of them do all of their initial R&D and testing on a KTM. Gotcha. Okay. And so Why? they they're steel frame, they're lighter, and they're always right at the top for horsepower. Okay. And they have like instead of a roller bearing on the crank, they have a plane bearing like a car mm. and they just run forever. <laughs> they run really well. We're getting taken to school, boys. Apparently, yeah. <laughs> I have. I have to say, I I don't know if it was a KTM or not, but I have towed out a snow bike before. Not very fun. Oh my yeah. god! They, how, how would you even do it? You have to just tie it off to the bumper, like you, and then to the ski. And oh my gosh! Oh, it was Is falling it? over. We had to go across like some, uh, like, just super narrow areas, and like worried about falling into creeks. And it was just like, all right, let's just get just get out <laughs> come on <Yeah. laughs> but no they're they're cool last year my buddy um blew up his motor like oh, okay. like 18 miles back oh no and he actually brought in a new motor on a sled and who swapped it out who hunter, hunter koch by the guy oh. that that left that timber slide kit here for me oh yeah oh. what that's he, he a lot Oscar of work that's <laughs> 300 he swapped that sucker out jeez uh, way in the back country Impressive. We've done that too. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Packed a motor in and out. Yeah. It's not Jeez. fun. Oh my gosh. So, uh, Darren, where's like your, do you just mainly stick around here for riding or do you venture out into other areas? Where's your stomping grounds? Um, pretty local for the most part. Okay. I'd like to, there's a group of us like to go to Revy once a year. Mm-hmm. And then I, probably my favorite area is McCall. Okay. Like the, all the bouldery train in McCall is, is pretty rad on a snow bike. Mm hmm. What other, I guess, what other mods do you do to your snow bike besides, obviously, the kit, handlebars, that kind of stuff? Anything else? Yeah, the biggest issue with snow bikes is keeping your water temps up. And so that's why you see my motor's kind of wrapped up with that plastic shield. Mm -hmm. Um, Pretty soon I'll have some radiator braces from Selkirk, who's also local here to Idaho. And those will have integrated radiator blocks that slide in and out. So basically you can block off your radiators all together. And then a thermostat, heated handlebars, and a temp gauge I wire up to my bars so I can see water temps at all times. There's and no then, way to adjust your bar temp, is there? Yeah, they're on a valve. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. So you do two bypasses. One goes up through the bars and the other one just straight back to the motor. So you can adjust how much flow goes to the handlebars with sure. the valve. And then some great big wide foot pegs so snow doesn't stick. Mm-hmm. And then uh, an air intake. Is it a pain shifting at all? No. You know, it seems like it should be with big right, snow yeah. boots on, but it's not an issue. What do you run for gear? 509. Oh. Yeah. I knew that. That was a, that was a big <laughs> switch for you this year, huh? Yeah. Um, you actually got a contract with them, correct? Yeah. Sweet. Good for you, man. Yeah. Excited. Last year, you were repping the, the timber sled uh, gear sponsorship, correct? Last year, I was on Climb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but like it was through timber sled, right? I had a contract separate from timber sled with, with Climb. Okay, cool. Yeah. This year is pretty much all new. Well, not all new, but a lot of new stuff for me and really focusing on local companies. Sweet. Sure. Like yep. Nearly everything that gets bolted onto that KTM is, is made. In north, in the northwest, at least, if yeah. not North Idaho. Heck yeah, that's important. That's really good. Okay, do you have any other questions before we ask the the sled talk question? I'm out, man. I got nothing. Good. 
Okay. So, Darren, so at the end of every episode, um, we always do, we have the guests ask a sled talk question. Um, so then we pull a micro clip on it and put it on TikTok and Reels and stuff, and people can engage and thumb punch and give their opinion on stuff. So um, is there a question putting you on the spot? Is there a question that you would like to? It could be snow, uh, snow bike specific. It could be broad snowmobiling, anything. Um, is there something specific that you would like to ask the listeners and viewers? Man, really put me on the uh, spot. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I love it. Everyone. <laughs> it's good to see what people can come up with. When yeah. They're... I guess, assuming your listeners are mostly snowmobilers, I'd like to, to hear from them on what they want to see a snow bike do. Okay. If there's something new they haven't seen done yet, you know, what, what do they think can't be done? Yeah, and to, to kind of ride that wave. Um, maybe they are they do they want to see a comparison video between like a writer like Scott and I and a writer like Darren Teal? Heck yeah, that would be sweet. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Because I mean, and a lot of those, a lot of those videos, yeah, like yeah. one of the one of the athletes is not up to par. I think one one's better than the other. I think on As most far, of those comparison videos. Oh, the compare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I think we're all kind of neck and neck as far as what we like to do. Yeah. yeah, It's been uh, pretty crazy getting to ride with Jaden because you have your an idea of what sleds do. Yeah. You see most people, sure. then you see these guys riding. Like, oh, <laughs> <man>. <laughs> pretty wild. Yeah, it's fun. It, it is fun. Heck yeah. Scott, did you want to ask another question? I, got, I don't have any of that. No, if you don't have one, that's fine. <laughs> you, you, asked, you asked one on the, on the yeah. last episode, so that's I all think, right. I think you need to kind of take a spot. What's your question? Yeah, what's your question? Um, Snow bike related question. Well, has anybody, uh, again, obviously, since I didn't even know KTM, I, I uh, was one of the most popular. My knowledge around snow biking is obviously very minimal. Um, has anyone ever done a backflip on a snow bike in the backcountry? Yeah, Turcotte has. Turcotte has? Yeah. Okay. Answer, man. Yeah. <laughs> and landed it, too. He did? Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's impressive. Wrote it out, yeah. That's that dude's just impressive all around. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's he's next level. Yeah, yeah, he's wild. He's a good dude too. So. Yeah. Heck yeah. Cool. Well, yeah, that wasn't necessarily a question for the listeners. That was more direct, <laughs> more, more direct to you. But uh, so yeah, we'll go ahead and wrap this episode up. This is the last episode here at the kickoff party up in Coeur d'Alene, Coeur Freshies. So on the last episode, I didn't really do much of an outro, but I do want to extend a. Uh, an immense thank you and a ton of gratitude to both Scott and Jaden for you guys allowing us to come up and rip a couple of episodes and, and come hang out and shake hands and meet everybody and drink some beer. So thank, thank you, you yeah, so man. much for allowing us to, anytime, to show yeah. up. Literally anytime. Yeah. Heck it, yeah. Yeah. Stuck to, stuck to, <laughs> I mean, like I, like I had said earlier off camera, it's cool that we did, you know, some virtual episodes for last season and then uh, come full circle and get to meet you guys, shake hands and, yeah, and do yeah. one in person. So, so yeah, that's uh we'll end it with that. Anybody have some ending notes that they want to part with? Like, comment, share. There you go. That's Let's it. party. <laughs> Heck yeah. Awesome. So let's talk listeners. Thanks. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. On the Living life with no regrets. I can't design the one I get dressed. Hey. Hey. Summertime on winter fresh. Fresh. I put a leg behind her head. No. Night night, she gone to bed. Bye-bye. Every day it's a new test. Uh. I just keep chasing these chicks. <laughs>